almost like a sure thing, or at least as close as you can get to a sure thing in American politics these days, we got to talk about how you can still make money from it. Now, many of these stocks have already rallied ridiculously because it's very clear who will benefit. But that doesn't mean that they don't have more room to run. We're talking about nearly a trillion dollars of spending on roads, on bridges, rails, the electric grid, broadband, mass transit, ports, among many other upgrades. Honestly, we should have done this years ago. We know that. But how about this? Better late than never. The thing is, there's over a decade of spending in here, which that a decade, not a month, not a quarter, but a decade, which means major long-term gains for all the companies that can feed at the federal trough. And like I said before, though, they've already run. Don't be surprised. So how do we figure out the infrastructure plays with the most upside from these levels? All right, to answer that, we got to go to Bob Lang. That's right. Bob Lang is the founder of ExplosiveOptions.net, as well as being the brilliant technician in the all-star duo behind Street.com's Trifecta Stocks newsletter. He's also the author of Know Your Options, and he's made us a lot of money over the years, hasn't he? All right, well, why don't we start with Martin Marietta Materials? That's the rocks and asphalt company that's maybe the most straightforward winner from this infrastructure package. We've had them on. I love these guys. When you see $110 billion for roads and bridges, a decent chunk of that is going to actually go to this company. No wonder the daily chart's been on fire lately. Lang points out that you got a solid pattern of higher lows. We love this, right? Higher lows and higher highs. Action recently forming. Oh, boy. Yes, the W that so many of us crave. Uh, and that's followed usually by a very big breakout. Now, I want you to look at this line called the Chicken Money Fly. Okay, look, this is how perfect. This is, this is like um, a Rothko here. Uh, it's an indicator that shows you whether big institutions are buying or selling. You see strong money flow here over the past couple of months. On the other hand, the RSI, or Relative Stock Index, well, uh, on the bottom, it shows that Martin Mayer is now in overbought territory. Uh-oh. Now, that could often signal a, a top, right? Maybe it went up too far too fast. Sometimes, though, overbought stocks simply stay overbought when they're really good stocks. Is that possible here? Lang likes that Martin Marietta has been rallying on heavy volume. And so you take a look at the volume, right? Now, I know that it looks light until you go, you know, go like that. Look at that. There's low volume right there. It's rather on heavy volume. Well, you might want to let the stock cool off short term, and that's always possible. Lang thinks this is a $300 name that could run to $500. So what you would do, probably freaks people out if it goes below that, held to that, buy it. I don't blame you if you want to wait for a pullback. All these you might want to wait for a pullback. No, no, that's not fair, because there's a rail that you might want to go right now. Next up, Deere. That's right, John Deere. Reports later next week. Everybody knows Deere is a company that makes farm equipment, but they also have a construction equipment business that could benefit enormously from this bill. That's one reason that stock's been absolutely on fire since mid-June. Just like Martin Marietta, Deere's got bullish money flow and relative strength index is overbought. Okay, so look at this, shaking money flow, amazing. Relative strength index is overbought here. Uh, Lang says you should look for the stock to make a move past earnings. If we get any kind of dip, he thinks it's a buying opportunity. I totally agree. I worked on this company because of the food stamp story this week. It, it, it could make a rough, uh, a new high, roughly 17 points from here. I, this is my favorite, okay? I just, when I did the work on it this weekend because of the food stamps, remember Biden's uh, upping the amount of money for food stamps. It just keeps coming back to deer, road construction deer. I have a deer. Yeah, can you believe it? I can actually operate it. I mean, what a simple machine. All right, now how about Union Pacific, the big West Coast Railroad, which I cannot operate. These guys benefit from the $66 billion in rail investments and the $17 billion for upgrading our ports. Now, we got an enormous backlog on the West Coast. Now, anything that makes it easier to import goods means more cargo for Union Pacific. If you've ever been out there, you know it is just a staging ground for Union Pacific. Lang points out that the stock's been trading in a box since March. Here's the box. OK, now uh, that's really fantastic. Why? Because when it breaks out, it is just going to break out big time. Meanwhile, volume trends have been bullish. We like to see the volume pick up. OK, uh, that means the stock rallies tends to rally on high volume. Remember, the volume is like a polygraph. It lets you know whether or not a move is telling the truth. There have been a lot of lying moves of late. Then there's the moving average convergence divergence. We always call that the MACD. That's an important momentum indicator that helps charters detect changes in a stock's trajectory before they happen. You, know, you don't need coincidence, right? You need before. In New Pacific's case, the MACD recently gave you a buy signal right here. Uh, probably hard to see. Maybe you have to check my word for it. That's where the black line crosses above the red line. Maybe. All right, and this is one of the most reliable tells out there. Plus, the stock's been able to bounce off its 50-day moving average. Oh, man, do we ever love that? It's a blue line. 
held it, held it, held it. But I think you have a nice floor of support uh, at down about seven bucks from here. People, by the way, didn't even like the quarter of Union Pacific. I want them back one. Memo, memo to self, B book Union Pacific. If Union Pacific can break out of its box pattern by closing above 229, he expects the stock to make a run to $250. That's a distant future. Remember, they buy back a lot of stock. I, I love these guys. Yeah, Liz, Lance Fritz. He, it's just a really well run company. All right, next up. Oh, speaking of well run companies, we can't forget about Nucor, right? That's the best run steelmaker in the world. I want you to take a gander at the weekly chart here. Obviously, when you spend a trillion dollars upgrading the entire country's infrastructure, well, what happens? It requires a lot of steel. That's insane. It's like a tech stock. There's a lot of steel. Hence uh, why the stock's been white hot lately. Lang thinks this is a situation where a terrific rally on strong volume is pulling in more and more buyers, even as the stock's already up 133% year to date. Now, this is currently a $124 stock, but Lang can see it going to 150 and then maybe 175 Wow. I think he's right. Fabulous moment for Nucor. They were doing great even when this infrastructure package looked like it was dead in the water. So just imagine how well they'll do uh, if it passes and just for a little commentary. When Nucor does well, it doesn't do well just for a year. It does well for multiple years. That's been the style. That's been the strategy. Stay long. Finally, this last one might seem out of place. American Tower? Yeah, it's a company that owns wireless towers all over the world. What makes American Tower an infrastructure stock? Okay, as it's currently constructed, the bill is 65 bill for broadband upgrades. And you got to expect a lot of that's going to be in mobile broadband. That means American Tower should be able to cash in on all the spending over the next decade. Hey, you know, this one's not so bad. Look at this. Uh, the Daily Chart. Well, American Tower hasn't been a huge winner in the past year. It's one of the strongest performers in the communication space over the last five years. They had a new CEO. Maybe that's what people are worried about. As Lang sees it, this is an amazing chart. Not a lot of worry, candidly. The stock's been consistently strong since bottoming in March, and it bounced back hard every time there's a dip. Not long ago, American Tower pulled back to its 50-day. That's the blue, right, moving average. And then it rebounded almost immediately. But it's still got some room. Lang notes the volume trends here have been positive. I question that right at the end, but he says positive. And unlike many of the other infrastructure names, the stock doesn't look overbought relative to the, uh, this is the RSI. So it's not over this line that would make it overbought. Last Friday, American Tower closed above its 20-day moving average. And then we got a tiny bit of follow-through today. At $283, this stock is six bucks away from making a new high. If it can get a little momentum going, Lang thinks it can run to 330 in the relatively near future, and then to 350. These are amazing price targets. Here's the, and, and remember, Lang doesn't fool around. These price targets are not fanciful. The bottom line, even though infrastructure stocks have already run, the charts as interpreted by Bob Lang suggest that many of them could have a lot more upside, especially Martin Mayer, Union Pacific, Newport, and American Tower. I think he's got a real good point. I'm throwing in John Deere. I think John Deere is going to be amazing. Hey, why don't we go to Eric in Delaware, please? Eric. Eric. 